Hey folks and welcome back to the Dust Bowl Catholic. Today we're going to go to a town that's known for its very large university and very well-known football team. But it also has a Catholic community that's been around since before that university opened for class. <laughs> The land run of 1889 for the unassigned lands of central Oklahoma brought settlers from around the world with the promise of free land. At the sound of the cannon, these settlers took off and found their way to the area in present-day Norman, Oklahoma. Among the 150 initial residents were German and Irish Catholics intent on making their mark. By 1890, a Catholic community had organized and to a certain extent was thriving through the services of priests from the nearby St. Elizabeth's Academy for Chickasaw Girls in Purcell, Oklahoma. In 1891, Norman was formally incorporated and the railroad arrived shortly thereafter. By 1892, the Territorial University of Oklahoma opened for classes less than two miles from the site picked for St. Patrick and St. Joseph's Catholic Church. By 1900, Norman had grown to one of the larger towns in central Oklahoma. As the town grew, the Catholic population continued to come together in solidarity. In 1917, the Oklahoma State Legislature passed the Bone Dry Law prohibiting the possession or transfer of any alcohol within the state except for scientific or medical reasons. Seeing this as an all-out attack on Catholics in a state heavily influenced by the KKK, the diocese instigated a lawsuit on the matter by shipping wine for sacramental use from Norman through Oklahoma City to Guthrie via the train line. The case was eventually settled in the state Supreme Court in favor of the church, making communion wine legal. Fast forwarding to the 1930s, and the university had grown tremendously, making a name for itself both in academics and athletics. By this time, the Catholic community had settled on the name of St. Joseph's. The original church is faintly visible in the background alongside the original school built in 1925. In 1951, under the direction of Bishop Eugene McGinnis, the current incarnation of St. Joseph's Catholic Church was built. The high spire makes it plainly visible from many points throughout the city. Inside, the stained glass was spared, unlike many renovations at other churches following the Second Vatican Council. These windows fill the interior with light, color, and beautiful scenes to accompany our Lord. Chief among these windows are the ones dedicated to the four evangelists. St. Mark and St. Matthew stand guard and look on at Christ crucified. St. John oversees those looking for healing and consolation in the confessional. Thank you. 
St. Luke accompanies and protects our Blessed Mother as he did while on earth. The warm interior with its vaulted ceilings draws your eyes forward toward the main and side altars. To the left, Our Lady and the Infant Jesus welcome each newly baptized soul into the church. On the right, St. Joseph guards our Lord in the tabernacle, just as he did to the child Jesus while on earth. And as always, our Lord looks down upon his sacrifice renewed. I hope you enjoyed this video at St. Joseph's in Norman. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to click subscribe right up there. That way you get all of our videos as they come out. If you want to see more videos right now, I'm going to have some come up right about here. Be sure to come and visit us on social media. We're on Instagram and Facebook. We also run a podcast that's on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play Music. And come on over to the website so you can see all of our stuff. And if you subscribe, you'll get links directly to your email box every day. Thanks, and we'll see you next time on the Dust Bowl Catholic.